Hello, my name is Stephen Matthews Graffenreed, and today I'm going to be doing my presentation based on the Barking Dog Experiment. For the video, I'm going to go through lab safety, how the experiment is formed, the ration, and even touch on the history of the Barking Dog. At the end, you all will see a video of the experiment being formed, but not by me. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, let's start off with the most important part of any lab. Lab safety. Of course, like almost any other lab, you're going to need gloves, goggles, and lab apron. However, in addition to all of the, this, you're going to need a few more things, such as a safe working environment or space free from any and all foam materials. The only foam materials that should be near this experiment are the closing and back. Also, personally, I think that this experiment should not be, for, be done at home. It should be only be performed under the guise of a teacher or an expert in order to reduce the likelihood of mistakes and injuries. Let's move on to the actual step-by-step -step process. First off, you'll need to prepare a mixture of two gases inside a test tube, and then soil the gases in order to make sure they mix properly. After that, immediately seal the tube until you are actually ready to begin the experiment. Once you are ready, unseal the tube and briefly place a lighter over the opening. However, if you have, if you have a match, you can actually uh, just drop it into the tube. It will, it will then ignite and create a bright blue flame, followed by a large breaking sound. Also, before I move on, a few sources I found mentioned that this experiment could actually be done more than once, with the same batch of materials or chemicals used previously. But, personally, I would advise against that. You'll see why I later in the video when I touch on the history of the Barking Dog. Here, I will actually be going into more detail on what actually goes on inside the tube, and the chemicals involved. The ration actually involves nitrous oxide and carbon disulfide. However, nitrous oxide can easily be substituted with nitrogen monoxide, if none is present. When placing the chemicals into the test tube, the very first thing that needs to be added is either nitrous oxide or nitrogen oxide. Then add a small amount of carbon disulfide, a few drops should do. This will create the necessary solution for the experiment. Once the solution is ignited, a combustion wave travels down the tube and presses the gas ahead of it on its way down, eventually causing the mixture to explode and energy or flames produce a climb back, back up towards the opening. Also, if you are in a dark room, you often see a bright blue flame. The carbon disulfide reacts with the nitrous oxide, forming nitrogen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur. You can see the chemical equation down below. Another thing I forgot to add was that the reaction does not simply rise up out of the tube. It bounces up and down inside the tube for a brief period of time before exiting the tube. There is no way to, for someone to see this with their own with their own eyes. You need to uh, observe it through a camera in slow motion. The barking dog falls into both the combustion and exothermic reaction categories. I noticed both these traits after I observed multiple videos of the experiment taking place. The combustion reaction is where one material burns into another. The exothermic reaction is release is release, the release of light or heat energy which took place during the explosion phase. Combustion and exothermic reactions normally go in hand hand. Lastly, the blue light produced is a product of chemical luminescence. Chemical luminescence is the emission of electromagnetic radiation, radiation during the course of chemical reactions. The energy produced in this reaction is not given off as heat, but as light. This reaction should be done at uh, night or in a dark room to improve visibility. I was actually kind of surprised about the history of the Barking Dog when I first uh, began doing research on the subject. I thought it was going to be like a, a ton of info, or at least a decent amount of info, but there wasn't. I was only able, able to find a few noteworthy events, one of them being the day it was performed and what transpired that day. It was first done in front of a live crowd of people on April 1853 by Eustace von Liebig. I think I got that right. I actually had to uh, look up how to pronounce his name 
put before like uh, start recording. I hope I got it right anyway. Okay, let's get. Uh, okay, anyways, first experiment went off without a hitch. The crowd, even the Queen of ba Bavaria, and her son, who were in attendance, that were amazed by his, this never before seen sight. So much so that they won an encore. And how could Eustace refuse? The Queen herself won an encore. You don't really say no to that. But this is what kind of like uh, came back. This came out to haunt him later on. There was an accident during his second demonstration that resulted in him injuring not only himself, but the Queen and her son as well. Soon after the reaction took place, the glass tube he was using shattered, and the pieces ended up being, being scattered across the stage. The combustion that took place inside the tube was too much of a glass to handle. Thankfully, no one was uh, killed in this accident. To this day, some experts theorize that Eustace left the mystery uncovered for too long which was also in it being exposed to oxygen for longer than it needed to be. The mystery inside the tube became contaminated thanks to this prolonged exposure to the air and change to nitrogen, di nitrogen dioxide, making an explosion that took place more powerful than the glass could withstand. That's generally why the experiment should only be performed once. Once up, up and you can die. Also, due to its chemical luminescent nature, it had an additional use besides entertainment. For some period of time, it was actually used to help take foes at night. Okay, so that's it for me. Here are my sources for anyone who is interested in looking at them. You can go ahead and pause the video here. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If any of you have any questions, leave a comment either down below or on the sketchboard page. Anyways, I hope you all have a nice day and go confound them. In this video, the nitrous oxide and carbon disulfide have been added and mixed in each test tube. One interesting fact about the way this experiment is being performed is that it is being done without a lighter or match. Instead, he is actually using one chemical reaction to kickstart another chemical reaction. He already has the opening covered with foot paper. He just added P4 that has been coated with carbon disulfide to foot paper. The carbon disulfide eventually evaporates thanks to the oxygen around it, leaving the P4 uncovered. The P4 then reacts with oxygen, causing it to go through oxidation and combust, which causes paper to burst in flames. The flames travel down the tube and sets the off the mixture below, producing nitrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur, and that is marking dog's remnant. A couple of reasons I get a hold of this in a couple of seconds here. Sound like a dog? Isn't that funny? We waited the longest and that was the softest. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Let me get these out of the way.